three most well-known methods used in polka yoke are the contact method, fixed value method, and the motion step or sequence method. Each of these three methods can be used to warn an operator or to control a process. In addition, they can be used at the source for inspection or in the informative inspection format. But how do these different methods sense that an error may occur? How do they sense that something is not right or that an abnormal condition is about to occur? Typically, anyone trying to mistake proof of process, especially if they are following Dr. Shingo's suggestions in the book Zero Quality Control, Source Inspection, and the Pokeyoke Method, will use one of three types of sensing devices. Physical contact sensing devices, energy sensing devices, and physical condition change sensors. Physical contact sensing devices are one form or method that can be used to sense when a process may have an abnormal condition. These devices work by touching the product, machine, or object physically. Examples may be a limit switch. These can verify the position of an item or identify whether an object is there or not. When this occurs, the limit switch may trigger a warning to the operator or control the process by shutting the machine, line, or process down. Energy sensing devices work in a similar way to physical contact. The difference is they sense energy rather than physical contact. Some examples of energy sensing devices are vibration-based sensors, photoelectric switches, proximity switches, area sensors, displacement sensors, tap sensors, beam sensors. Energy sensors use forms of energy, such as photoelectric switches which use beams of light to measure items that are transparent. Some backup cameras also use sensors to gauge the distance that is left before an object is hit. There is one other type of sensing device that contains three subcategories. It is called condition or conditional change sensing devices. These devices are broken down into three categories that contain pressure sensing devices, temperature sensing devices, and electrical current sensing devices. Pressure sensing devices look for changes in pressure or errors in pressure. For example, if an air compressor needs a certain amount of pressure to operate correctly, the device would monitor this and warn a user or shut the machine down if an error occurs. Thermometers, thermostats, and temperature gauges are different tools that can be used to sense temperature changes. Some examples of different processes where you might want to use a temperature sensing device may be preheating an oven, warming up injection molding machines, preheating dyes, and freezers that need to maintain a specific temperature. Like other forms of pokey yolk, if the device finds that the temperature is not correct, it may warn the user with a signal or automatically adjust the temperature by turning it up, down, or even shutting it off. The final type of sensing device is a device that senses when a specific electrical current is altered or changes. Like other devices, it attempts to identify a current that is abnormal. This can be used in electrical currents, welding, and wiring of items. Whether the device is a pressure sensing device, a temperature sensing device, or electrical current sensing device, ultimately the device must get the attention of an operator to correct the abnormality it needs to be able to control the process itself. For example, many facilities use Ondon lights to notify operators when a machine is running correctly and when a problem occurs. The Ondon changes the visual based on the status of the machine and provides a way to identify normal and abnormal conditions. While visuals are a great way to get the attention of operators, other sensory devices may be better. For example, if an error, mistake, or defect occurred, would a loud noise get your attention quicker or a light? 
In most cases, a loud noise would get your attention quicker than a light. With that being said, you will need to decide what devices are appropriate to get the attention of workers or ensure that the Pokeyoke can control the process on its own. But these are different devices that help us reveal abnormalities and grab the attention of operators. With that being said, it's time for you to go implement some devices of your own. We'll see you in the next lecture.